because you're too stupid to talk to me. Or anybody else for that matter. You should probably have some kind of gatekeeping thing that keeps you, and only you, out of the comment section of every tech video ever. Welcome to Sanford, North Carolina, home of you know, some really sketchy downtown turns, actually. It's been a while since we've done one of these rolling rambles, and some of you are probably pretty excited about this one, and you should be, because I'm going to get all pissy and talk about things that make me mad. You know how much I love to get in an internet argument with a snob. Well, it seems that one of my more recent videos, one of my short videos, complaining about something I only discovered recently that's apparently been around forever and a day, it didn't go over too well with a couple of computer snobs out there, one of whom I just banned from the channel because I got tired of him. And I want to talk about it. I recently discovered that Windows 10, starting in Feature Update 2004, to make up for a mistake that Microsoft made where they wouldn't actually make sure that they had enough space to do an update before doing an update, <laughs> Microsoft is so competent, so brilliant, that they wouldn't check the free space before unpacking and just destructively replacing parts of the operating system. Ooh, neck crack. So. Because Microsoft is so infinitely wise and brilliant and, and clearly just, you know, something as fundamental as making sure that the disk isn't full before you destroy everything didn't occur to them for some reason, um, to make up for this issue, rather than just checking to make sure there's enough disk space available before destroying everything, they also decided to create a new feature. There's an NTFS reserved space feature. And this feature automatically reserves about seven gigabytes of your drive, at least based on all the testing I did last night, about seven gigabytes of your hard drive space on your system drive for Windows updates and Windows temporary files. Now what this means is that if you, the user, the owner, the person using the computer need to use your hard drive. You need to store stuff. And you run out of room. You go down to zero bytes free, whatever. You only have half a gig. Windows is actually hiding several gigabytes of extra space from you. Let's say you're working on a video project. And this video project, you know, you have to dump some clips from your phone or from whatever and you run out of room because you're dumping clips and you just need to get them all on the drive and work on it. You, you run out of room for whatever reason. Maybe you don't have enough room for the clips. Maybe you dump the clips, but then there's not enough room for the temporary files to do your editing. This could apply to anything. This could apply to, you know, Photoshop and Lightroom. It doesn't matter. Pick your program. If you run out of room, your program will either crash or start throwing up cryptic messages that don't really necessarily tell you what the actual problem is, disk space. They'll be like, oh, couldn't write to file, or you know, couldn't create file. Or, it's not gonna say, hey dummy, your hard drive's out of space. It's, it's gonna, you know, most programs aren't written to really take account of the fact that you ran out of room. They'll just say they can't write to the file. Excuse me. The problem is that it could have written to the file had the disk space not been stolen away for Windows updates. So, seven gigabytes of space. There are varying opinions about this. Is seven gigabytes a lot? Well, I would say seven gigabytes is a pretty substantial amount of space. This is coming from someone who has many, many terabytes of storage. Many terabytes. I, I am not lacking in disk space. But seven gigabytes is a lot of disk space. Seven gigabytes <clears throat> is actually about the amount of space that Windows by itself uses on the drive, which is why seven gigabytes is the amount that this new reserve, because Microsoft are dumb feature, hides from you. 
So you've got seven gigabytes of space being used by this reservation thing because a feature update of Windows might need that space to do the feature update. Some big bulky update comes out, we want to make sure we have room for it, so we'll just make sure the user can't use it. And you're, you, you would think that you know this, this seven gigabytes, oh, it's not that much space, but at the same time, if you're in a situation where you're out of disk space and you're trying to get things done and Windows is hiding it from you, that's kind of a problem. So, what would we do about this? Well, naturally, if we, if we know about this feature, we would want to go somewhere and be like, hey, uh, I, know, I know that you're like holding back this space to try and protect the update engine from failures down, down the line, but right now, like, I'm, I have actual work to do. I, ha I have to get some stuff done. So right now, j just for now, could you maybe turn that off and let me use a few gigs more, you know, on my computer that I own so that I can get my stuff done and then I can delete some stuff and make the room back and everything will be hunky-dory. Woohoo! That, that's great. That sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Like, you could, you could turn off the, the safety, do your project or whatever, delete a few things, turn it back on, everybody's happy, except that's not how the real world works, because that's not how Microsoft works, because Microsoft are morons. They are completely incompetent effing morons. Microsoft thinks that you should not have any way to turn this off. Now, if you go into the settings panel and go to system and go to storage, I think it is, where you can see this really um, not very detailed breakout of just like, here's how much space any, each individual folder you have that we've decided to look at is using. And you tell it to show more categories. There is one called System and Reserved. Now, System is self-explanatory. <clears throat> Windows is the system. Uh, the programs that are part of Windows, that's the system. Arguably, the programs you've installed could also be under system. But reserved accounts for seven extra gigabytes, and they even have a little link, learn more, so that you can find out that this reserved thing is a thing. I never use the settings panel if I can help it because it's absolute trash. So that's why I didn't go in there and find out that this was a thing before. Well, that's part of it. So I, I discovered that this setting is a thing, that this res reservation is a thing. But I discover it because Windows, I'm shrinking the drive to make a disk image as small as possible. And Windows says, oh, you got like 100 megabytes free now. Okay, that's pretty darn tight. So let's go take, make a copy of this disk that we've now shrunk to as small a size as possible. Reboot into Linux to, to use my software that I've written to make a disk image well, lo and behold, I go into Linux, and this, this disk image, this, this file system I'm about to make an image from, that says it has 110 megs free. In Linux, it's 8 gigabytes, almost, free. Eight, it's like almost 8 gigabytes, where Windows is saying 100 megabytes? Where did all this space come from? So I'm like, okay, surely there's some file system corruption. Surely something's wrong with this file system. We definitely want to make sure that that's repaired before we use this computer as a template for a whole bunch of other computer repairs in the future. Reboot back into Windows, run a disk check. Everything's fine. Found no problems. <clears throat> okay, found no problems. Everything's good, right? 100 megabytes free. Okay, maybe off chance that there's some like pointer that needs updating or something. Something went wrong with the resizing. Extend the partition to fill the volume again. Okay, shrink the partition again. Shrink. Okay, there's like zero bytes free, or like or like 10 megabytes or something, very little space free. Reboot into Linux. There's like eight gigabytes free. So what's going on? And only in this situation did I discover this discrepancy that Windows doesn't report it as empty space, but Linux does. You mount it and there's all this free space. What's up with that? So I try to figure it out. I start running searches. It takes me a long time to find out about this reservation mechanism that had slipped under my radar for three years. 
<clears throat> I, di I didn't know it existed. And all of a sudden I do. And all of a sudden I'm pissed because just the day before, I had a computer that had one of those 32 gig EMMC solid state drives that's non-upgradable, running Windows 10, out of space. And I clean it up and I can only get about three gigs free. I also have noticed over the past couple of years that it's become harder for some reason where before I could install all these programs and I'd still have like 12, 10, 12, whatever gigs free sometimes. All of a sudden it's hard for me to clean a computer, even with like file compression, all these advanced techniques I do, getting a 32 gig SSD to have 10 gigs free for some reason is incredibly difficult now where I seem to remember in the past I had a much easier time of it even without compressing the Windows files. I could get to that coveted 10 gigs free mark. I, I could, let me change the camera setting here real quick. Um, I could get to this mark, I could make it happen, but now three? Why is it I can only get to three no matter what I do without like stripping actual programs I can only get to three. So I'm having troubles preparing the system pack to keep space free, ironically, so that updates can go through. So I go onto this system and I give up because I just can't seem to get it cleaned. So I say, let's just do a clean install, wipe it clean, new install, get everything set up, three gigs free. Well, but this is one of my images. This is not. It's not some magical thing. This is a disk image I made by shrinking it as much as possible using NTFS resize and then taking a snapshot of the whole disk. I know for a fact that this thing uncompressed isn't even 20 gigs. You know, even if you set up a paging file, uh, you know, whatever, there's no way, no way that this thing's using more than like 24 gigs. If you take into account the marketing gigabyte versus computer gigabyte thing, okay, maybe there should be five gigs free, but, but like two or three on, on a clean install with just a bunch of applications and no user data. What is going on here? This is the day prior. I can't get enough space free for them to do updates. It turned out it was because this thing reserved space to do updates. But for some reason, despite it stealing seven gigs away and not letting you use it so that you can run updates, the system didn't have enough space to run updates. So even the whole point of this stupid reservation system, it, it's moot. It, it's not actually working. It's not actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. And for all the claims, you know, it's like this whole system, it, it isn't doing it. Like, you, okay, you've reserved seven gigs for updates, and you're complaining you don't have room for updates. For not a big update either, it's just a cumulative update. It's not like seven gigs worth of updates. It's not a feature update. And it doesn't have room even though it's reserved it. So why? Why does this system exist? This is the fundamental problem with this whole notion of having a space reservation for update system that just docks it off your free space even though it's technically free space. Because the user should decide what to do with that space. Not Microsoft, not Windows, the user should have full control to administer the system. Now, snobs show up in the comments when I'm talking about finding this seven gig waste and turning it off because my disk, there's this huge discrepancy, I want that seven gigs gone. And people show up saying, that's not a lot of space. Seven gigs isn't a big deal. It's like, oh, if you don't like the system requirements, don't use the system. Well, these people are stupid, absolutely stupid. They don't understand the underlying problem. This is not something that you can just toggle. This is something you have to go and type a DISM command for. Some people have documented that even DISM doesn't necessarily clean it out. Sometimes you have to go into the registry and like local machine, Microsoft Windows current version, um, reserve manager, or reserve MGR, and zero a bunch of limits in addition to zeroing the thing that toggles the reserve thing on or off. <clears throat> you have to go in here and turn all these hidden registry D word and Q words to zero to make it fully go away. This is a problem. This is not, this is like, 
Let's say you had a control panel that could do everything imaginable on the machine that you would ever care about. Now, let's say that that control panel is replaced in favor of a control panel that only has a few things that they just sort of add as they go. Let's say there were a hundred options before and now there's ten. Oh, it's simpler. It's easier for people to understand. It works a whole lot better with all that empty space they like to put around literally everything in Windows now. Okay, but the problem is I'm out of disk space. You go to storage sense or whatever and there's no way to reclaim it even there. There's no toggle to turn it off even there. In fact, the closest you can get to friendly is a DISM command that you'd have to know that this exists, which there's not really much to tell you that it exists unless you happen to go in that one setting panel and dig enough into it to figure out exactly what it's really doing. Um, and then you have to figure out the command, which is not obvious. It's not handed to you. There's not breadcrumbs that lead you to it. You have to just happen upon it in an internet search. And even then, sometimes it doesn't turn it off. I don't understand how some people show up and say, oh, that's not really a problem, when I am quite literally describing something that caused a problem, that has probably been causing problems for me and even, I don't know, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of other people who have small EMMC solid state drives in their computers that were fine with Windows 10 from 2015 to 2020. But once 2020 rolled around and that feature update went out, all of a sudden their drives go from having a lot of empty space to being full and updates not working because for some reason the reserve thing doesn't let loose the space for what it's reserved for. So this is a problem. It is literally a problem, a demonstrable problem. No question about it, it is a problem. You cannot say that it is not a problem when it is a problem. I have shown that it's a problem. Other people have experienced this as a problem. So take your snobby notion that everyone should have a two terabyte solid state drive in their 32 thread laptop and shove them up your asshole because you're full of it. You don't know what you're talking about. You are literally telling me that a problem isn't a problem. You're dumb. Get out my comment section. I'll ban you if I see you saying this unironically because you're too stupid to talk to me. Or anybody else for that matter. You should probably have some kind of gatekeeping thing that keeps you and only you out of the comment section of every tech video ever. But anyway, this is a clear problem and there is no easy solution. You have to know a cryptic command. You have to know a problem that is sparsely, if not entirely undocumented, exists. You have to figure out the cryptic command to turn it off. And only then do you get this disk space back. And even then it may not work. This is ridiculous. This is terrible planning on the part of Microsoft. And the people who are defending it in the comments on that video and, and on the internet more generally are stupid. They do not understand that yes, some people have computers that are different than yours. Some people use computers differently than you. Some people don't have a terabyte SSD with 950 gigabytes of it empty like you do. Oh, wise, brilliant, rich boy. Some people have limitations. Some people have a lot of pictures. Some people need to use a lot of temporary space because they're editing humongous files in Photoshop that eat up their temp space really friggin' fast and they don't have, like, they can't just clear it all the time. Sometimes people need that extra space. It is a problem if it's not there. It is a bigger problem if it's not there and you can't get it back. I'm tired of these people. I hate these people. I call them snobs because I don't know what else to call them. They are these elitist techno weenies that think that everybody should have a $2,000 computer under their desk. Everybody should have unlimited computing resources at their fingertips. And if they have a problem where they don't have enough room, they should just buy more. Why don't you just buy a bigger solid state drive? It's akin to those people who are like, if you don't like being banned off of major social media platforms, just go make your own social media. 
that will ban off of your host. So just make your own hosting platform to host your own social media. At some point, they're basically saying, well, if you don't like it, just build your own society. Build your own society. Build all of the infrastructure from scratch using all of the expertise you don't have and shouldn't need to have. At some point, your elitism breaks down completely because it never ends. Elitist pricks do not deserve to be given your time and your space. But the problem is they still exist even if you ignore them, even if you fight back, they still exist and they won't stop. Um, you could even go so far as to call them trolls, but here's why I don't call them trolls. I would never dignify these people with the title of troll because techno snobs who hand wave away every single problem that you have that they don't, saying that it's trivial or it's irrelevant, doesn't matter, whatever. These people who hand wave away everyone else's problems as not a big deal, just go do this, even though they're not the ones having to do it, they are not trolling. They genuinely believe their bullshit. They genuinely believe their own crap which makes them not trolls, but morons. They are stupid. They might be intelligent in some areas. It's entirely possible that they're highly proficient in something. They could even be really good web developers that just happen to be gigantic, gaping, bleeding, stupid assholes. It happens, man. It happens that these people exist. But no, they don't get to be called trolls. A troll is something that could almost be considered noble or brilliant. A proper, exquisitely done, masterful trolling of someone or something. It requires a high degree of understanding of the thing that you're going after, a tenacity to keep dealing with it, to keep putting out the correct thing to keep them going. There's a beauty in trolling. There is an art to trolling morons on the internet for fun or profit. There is an art to all of it. And the problem is these people, nothing that they do is artistry. They fall into it. They are accidentally annoying. They don't even realize what hot garbage they are. And all of this because Windows stole seven gigabytes of disk space from me. That, that's where all this stems from is a little bit of a lack of disk space. But the underlying problem of it, the, the philosophy that the user's too stupid to free up their own space, or the user can't be trusted to keep enough space free so that our update doesn't destroy their operating system, even though we're the programmers and could have checked for that. No, somehow it's the user. It's always that the user's too dumb, the user doesn't know what they're doing, the user has no clue. The user is the problem. So because the user is too slow and stupid and incapable and illiterate and dumb and so on and, and is also simultaneously, despite being such an idiot, so brilliant that they're capable of causing all of the problems, it's definitely not the programmers. We got to put this fail safe in that steals more space away from them because everybody has a two terabyte PCI Express solid state drive and a giant, you know, 32 gigs of RAM. You know, it's, everybody's got a big computer. Software's a gas. Let it expand to fill its container. Everybody should have a fast computer like the devs do. Everybody should have infinite storage space like devs totally have. You know, no developer ever runs out of storage space on their stuff. They always buy a bigger drive all of the time for their non upgradable $2,000 laptop. Nah, come on, man. This is ridiculous. This is so stupid. I don't understand it. I, I don't understand how anybody can be okay with all of this crap. And that's what it is. It's just a bunch of crap. I don't know what else to say. Like, I'm actually running out of steam at this point because all I'm doing is saying, these people are dumb, those people are dumb, and all of them blame you for being the problem when literally everyone else is the problem. What, what can I say? <laughs> I don't even know. It's so stupid. It's so amazingly dumb. The problems come from all angles. How is it that Microsoft, a company that literally has billions upon billions of dollars cash in the bank, 
is so incapable of doing something as simple as checking to make sure they're not going to destroy everything due to running out of room. How, how is that possible? I mean, we've really fallen that far in this society that large corporations with tons of money can't hire people who'll do something as simple as a free space check before they start writing files that could destroy the system if for some reason the right feel like mission critical shit and they can't check a number to make sure it's big enough. What what are you guys smoking? Like what I I don't want any of it, but what are you smoking? And then the people who simp for Microsoft, not even for Microsoft, just simp for like not a problem. Like I almost want to call it a a not a problem fetish because these people that that are simping for Microsoft in this case, they say that, oh, that's not a real problem. Uh, any problem that you have is not a real problem because they haven't had it. So it can't be a real problem. What is up with this? It, it's like a power trip. That's not a real problem. I declare it so. And because I, that makes me seem like an authority on the matter. And if I'm an authority, that means that I'm looked up to and respected and, and I have virtue and intelligence and a brilliance beyond you mere moron humans. Except I'm a computer guy that's been programming since I was like eight and I've been doing all sorts of stuff from the lowest to the highest level in computing for two decades at least, if not more. So if you're gonna get into a dick measuring competition, mine if it hit you in the head, would bury you 12 feet underground from the impact. Where does all this self-confidence come from with these people? Like, I don't get it. It's almost like it's all a big lie. And the truth is that their techno weenie has been surgically altered to be female. Techno female. Now, I've known some women with some big techno female weenies in my day. But these people clearly are not it. Even as a, uh, shall we say, trans-intelligent, because, you know, they want to be intelligent, but they're not, they can't succeed. Anyway, that's the end of my thoughts. I think I've tread upon enough demonetization ground for today. So I'm going to get off of this here camera, and I'm going to go do this job. Well, two jobs, actually. I have two jobs to go to right now. Thanks for hanging out with me. You can look forward to content that's not as poorly done as this relatively soon. Because this is the start of me remaking my channel. Now, a few administrative notes. If you waited this far, I assume that you're a super fan, that you actually give a shit about this channel, and that you really want to know what's going on. So, I put it to a vote. I am merging all of my disparate channels back into one, and I'll just be a unified Jody Bruchon everywhere on all platforms. <clears throat> Still going to upload everything to all platforms, but the politics, the entertainment, photo, video, all that's getting collapsed back. The only separate channels I'll have are VHS slash stock footage and Gazing Cat Productions, which is really just kind of there as a portfolio, and even then I haven't updated it in forever. But that doesn't need to be moved over. So the channel merge is going to happen. Um, if you haven't noticed for some reason, I've been doing community quiz posts. I'm trying to post at least one a day where I ask a tech question and you answer it and see if you get it right. So I'm going to try to keep that going moving forward. And my goal at this point, now that I've gotten all of my major non-video projects out of the way and I'm back to just doing a whole lot of computer repair, service, consulting, etc. work, I can carve out more time to do this. So I'm going to do this more. And my intention is to really amp up the quality of the product. That's part of the reason that it's taken so long just to make this. Because I feel like any time that I spend doing this discussion, a, it needs to be worth you watching and listening, but B, that's time I could be thinking about what am I going to do in terms of higher quality productions. I still have a UI documentary. I still have History of Windows documentary. That stuff has not left my mind. It has weighed on my mind every single day since I brought them up. And it's gotten to the point that I really want to get them done. I have several topics I want to discuss. And the problem is, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. 
I don't know if you remember when I did the sound design thing recently for a, a feature length action movie, but dear God, I put in a lot of work on that. A lot of it rushed because they suddenly were like, hey, we got into a film festival we didn't think we'd get into, so it's gotta be done. Oh, oh, okay. And next thing I know, I'm devoting all my time for a solid week to just making sure this thing is cranked out. But the amount of work I put into that action film sound design made me realize, you know, if I just put that kind of work into this, if I carved out a little bit more time and put that level of work into one of my computer videos, they'd be worth watching to the point that nobody would complain. And if they did, this is what they get. So, what I'm gonna do is stop putting out quite as much of this crap and put out more high quality crap, which means you're not gonna see frequent uploads, not as frequent as before. Maybe I'll put out shorts to exploit the algorithm, but that's about it. But the intention is higher quality, not worrying so much about quantity. Also, there's probably gonna be a big content dump of all my politics crap. I'm sorry if you don't like it, but I'm based as fuck. And um, I don't like leftists because I think they're stupid, because you can't be smart and be a leftist, because if you critically think about stuff, you just can't go that far left. You can be, a, you know, left-leaning like I am. I'm, I'm left-leaning libertarian. But extremists are psycho, and leftists quadruply so in this day and age. The pendulum has got to go back that way. And if you don't like it, that's fine. Don't watch those videos. Just choose not to watch. It's okay if you don't watch literally everything that I post. I don't want you to watch everything that I post. Please, for love of God, don't watch literally everything if you don't want to. So when that content dump comes, just know that I'm not attacking you. You don't have to agree with me. You can disagree all you want, but you better think before you respond. If you choose to argue with me, I will hand your ass to you if you aren't put together. Anyway, enough of me posturing on the internet like some kind of little boy. You think he gonna win some kind of competition? Cause that's probably not happening either. All right, well, I'm gonna take my tiny techno weenie and go home. Thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. You know that interaction crap. No, I'll get you later. Oh, I can see the microphone hasn't failed yet. That's pretty cool too. I charged the batteries this time. It's pretty cool. Take care. Bye now.